Hello, how you doing? And welcome to another Wi-Fi Sheep Tech video with me, Tom. Today we're doing part three of the NULA graphics card for the BBC Micro. Let's recap what we've done so far. So this is called a video NULA. And effectively what it is, is a replacement graphics card for an original 8-bit BBC Micro. The ULA we need to take out, or ULA, sorry, we need to take out, I'm gonna get this confused all day, is underneath this heat sink. Now, when I bought this machine, the heat sink had actually come off, and I never put any thermal paste back on, so all it's holding this on is a piece of double-sided tape. So it is simply the case. Got to take that straight off. There we go, so I'm gonna install this up top. And now I'm going to try fitting the board. Okay, uh, one of the bugbearers for me, I'm just going to show you the game now, is the BBC Micro version of SimCity, which is on the original builds. It's just really, really sore on the eyes to look at for any length of time. Okay, so there's the colours. So I want to change my red to green, which is colour one on the system. So to change that to green, I want to basically bring more green in. Let's see if that's any better. Eh, okay. That's what the roads look like. Scroll onto the map. I mean, it's not perfect, but I think personally that's a lot better than it was. Right, what's happening? Um, if you saw the last video on the video NU Valet uh, card, to be honest with you, although it worked and I was able to run enough to show you some tech stuff, um, other stuff didn't work at all. This was having none of it. It just kept throwing funny errors or odd screen modes. It just wouldn't do it. Okay, so since those videos were done, I had a couple of emails and one of them was actually from the creator and developer of the NULA, Rob Coleman. Um, now, my first thoughts were maybe he wasn't too happy because I found a few issues or whatever, um, as you normally do. But no, it was actually a very positive discussion. And Rob was kind enough to send me a second card. Now, I must stress, there's nothing wrong with the first card. We both agreed the card worked fine and Rob's software worked fine. The issue we had was with some of the demo software that wasn't created by Rob, that wasn't directly compatible. And that problem was due to the um, Turbo MMC I was using, which is this little device here, flash storage device, um, and the software has been patched since, and I've been running off floppy disk, which has solved that problem. So I just want to say huge thank you to Rob for sending me a second card for today's installation. Um, really, really kind gesture. I'll put the link in the description to this video if you want to uh, look online. Um, I think they're about £60 on eBay at the moment. Okay, so today we're going to fit the second NULA card into a BBC Micro Master Series 128. Let's get going. So we'll start by removing the top case of the Master 128. To do this, we simply have to unscrew four screws on the underside of the unit. Turning the computer back over, the top case should now simply lift off. Inside we need to identify the NULA chip. It has to be desoldered. To do this I took the board out of the computer and laid it down on a sheet of bubble wrap to protect the components on the other side. Okay, uh, desoldering. Um, not my favourite thing to do, which is why I've put this project off for so long. Uh, lots of advice and tips on how to solder and desolder, especially my previous efforts. So uh, we're going to try a couple of those out. So the first suggestion was, because this is really old, this is like almost 30 plus year old solder on here. The first suggestion was to flux up and add some fresh solder on top of the joints we actually want to remove, because it will help reflow everything. So it's going to be a piece of wire some flux and we'll just add just on top to just help clean up and help us to reflow a bit easier like so okay, I'm not going to block the 
camera. To seem odd to be adding more solder and taking it off, but never mind. To be fair, I have seen this trick done on other YouTube channels with great success. Generally with uh, vintage TV repair people. Okay, so that's flying a bit of fresh solder on. Now, the solder pump, people said I didn't use it properly, so we'll try using it properly. Try and uh, not be in shot for this. Okay, that does actually work better. I wasn't using it right. Now I'm just going to make sure that there's some pins on this one to slightly bent over, so straighten up the pins. And we'll see if we can actually get this to uh, come out. After a little bit of fiddling around, the old ULA chip was able to be simply lifted out the board. And as you can see, I got it out intact. Okay, let's turn our attention to the new NULA kit. You've seen the unboxing on these before. This is the second kit. And what we need from inside here is the chip holder. And we're going to fit the socket in back into the board, uh, making sure it's, it's uh, the correct way around. You see the little point there. And uh, we need to uh, place it back into the PCB. Okay, once done, we turn the board back over and here I am fluxing the pins this is needed to make sure we can flow the new solder easily I'm just using a little bit of wire there and now with heated soldering iron and some standard thin core solder I'm just going to start heating up and attaching the new chip holder or chip socket I should say to the main PCB Okay, nearly done. That's the last pin done right there. And finally, we just need to clear off the flux, which is actually electrically conductive. So we need to have that removed. Okay, now it's time to install the new ULA or NULA board. So we take the protective foam off the back and you see the pins. It's important to get this the correct way around. So it's going to slot into the socket like so. And just the final push down right there. Okay, final part of the installation is to attach the additional GPIO pin or loop cable. And that goes in this socket and it goes onto the fourth pin of IC6. Like so, and it just couples on like that. Okay, now we can reattach the keyboard. Making sure, of course, on the BBC Master to plug the two ribbon leads in. It's not just one ribbon lead like it is on a Model B. And let's power up. And there we go, as you can see the computer is working, however it will need some initial setup. Right, moving over to my bridge PC, we've got some files needed loaded on to, from the internet, loaded onto a USB stick, and I'm going to write these to a compatible floppy disk. To do that I'll put a um, used blank double density disk in the drive, and on Windows using a program called Omniflop, I'm going to format and write BBC Micro disk images to a compatible floppy disk. So this is actually now writing BBC Micro DFS format floppy disks. Okay, with that done, we'll eject the disk. Now I want to install the EEPROM cartridge, the NULA cartridge. So what I've done is I'm going to use one of these BBC Master Series cartridges, which you can add, put your own ROM chips inside. We just put the outer case back on like so. And that will mean we can take the chip in and out of the system much easier. And you can see how the cartridges slot into the provided slots. There's two on a BBC Master, like so. 
now with the computer running we'll just check roms and you'll see rom zero here says it's unplugged so we need to tell it to insert the rom so insert zero now if we check there you go it's now installed so we should now have the video driver software on board the machine and we can check this by asking it for the vn palette command and there we go it does actually load up the software okay let's try some of that um, software we wrote to disk now these were the things that weren't working last time and these are the demos of uh, high quality or high color quality images these are 16 color palette mode 2 images which are mostly screenshots from other games on the demo discs But as you can see, the color depth, especially on the castle image there, is greatly improved. Right, let's have a look at some games now. We'll switch to the MMC flashcard. And we'll just call that directory. Okay, so this is Dirt Devil Dennis. This is a special modified version to utilize the NULA features. So it should be running in mode 2 with a full 16 color palette. And as you can see, even if I can't play the game, there's a lot more color depth in the rather simple sprites in this game. Okay, let's move on now. This is a new port of Frogger, again, utilizing the NULA. Well, this is from Retro Software. And this is really impressive. It actually looks almost as good, if not as good, as the original arcade build. As you can see, the color depth is there, and the general overall speed and performance of the game is really great. It is amazing to think this is running on original 8-bit BBC Micro hardware. Okay, finally, I'll just demonstrate some of the new color modes. So to do this, we need to call asterisk VL star VN, VD, U, and then on. And now we can call mode 97, which is a new high resolution mode, not standard to the BBC Micro. You may notice that the font has actually changed slightly. It's slightly thinner, single pixel line font. And yeah, new graphics modes. Okay, so we want to try and use the colour. I've set the colour to red, to background, and now we can call it VDU1900, and then the final three digits are RGB commands, and that makes a grey colour. So if I now ask for colour 128 as my background, and if we break the machine, you'll notice that the black has now changed to that custom grey. A BBC Micro isn't normally capable of displaying any sort of grey scale. So if I want to change the white text, I call VDU19, comma, 0, comma, 7, which is the color white, comma, and I'm going to call 100, 100, 0, press end, and you'll see how the white has now been swapped out for a sort of muddy, yucky brown color. Again, a completely custom color, and it's then locked to the system, so if we break, reset the machine, it will still run in this session in these color palettes. And here we are showing you the ROM commands in the new mode 97. So there we go, that concludes my review of the video NULA card for the BBC Micro series. On all, I have to say, I am generally really impressed with any video upgrade that can convert the ULA from eight colors up to over 4,000. It's a seriously impressive bit of kit. It's a much needed update. Is it worth doing if you are running a BBC Micro? Definitely, if you're running one as of today in 2018, definitely worth upgrading as the card is fully backwards compatible with all the original software. I've not really hit any problems with running any original 80s or even 90s software. Um, there's been a few hiccups along the road and I've shared all those but overall seriously impressed. It is seriously worth doing. Anyway as ever thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you real soon right here on the Wi-Fi Sheep channel. Bye for now. Thank you.